Hi everyone. Hope you all had a had a good weekend and enjoyed the extra day off. Um, so this is week two of lockdown. We're January or January nineteenth, Tuesday. Um, and so this is our lesson one of week two, and um, we're going to continue on where we where we left off in last week. So we're going to finish off these cycles, um, of the earth. And we're going to move on to um, chemical reactions. So finish off the cycles. A bit about global warming, climate change. I know you're sick to your teeth and um, with, with, with that because you do, you do it in a lot of subjects. But we, we go through that. And then um, on to chemical reactions. So a bit of chemistry. Obviously, we can't do the chemical part of it. But we'll do the theory part of it um, to tick off another box. So we're, 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 not, we're not losing any time um, from being at home. Okay, so we'll go back to where you, uh, where, where, where you start um, thinking. You know, and a lot of you have uh, these uploaded and um, you'll see that I've um, I've ticked some of them and I've put a question mark for those of you who haven't so try and get these uploaded so I can see that you're all on the on the right track on Thursday we might do a live and um, do a live lesson I know um, I think eight of you just said you were happy with the videos but six said you went like a mix so we'll try a live one on Thursday um, and, and see how we get on okay so let's go back and have a look at this um, really, really quick. I have lots of questions here, all exam style ones. So let's have a quick look through and we'll see where, where um, people found this tricky. So first one off, matter. Well, matter is, is used really an awful lot in chemistry. So matter is anything. It must have a mass and it must occupy space. You know that it's all particles and... Um, what everything is made of. But it must have a mass and it must occupy space. Two compounds that contain carbon. The, well, the big one, carbon dioxide, cause of global warming and so on. And the other one is what we burn, methane gas, CH4. Finite, this term here, when you see finite, finite means you can run out of it. So it, it's um, limited. run out so we don't have um loads and loads and loads and we can keep using and using and using so we use find it when we talk about oil gas fossil fuels coal and so on so it will run out eventually what process moves carbon from the atmosphere to plants full topic on this which we will get to later on in the year photosynthesis in five what process moves carbon from plants to animals so generally layman's term for that is well eating generally it moves it from plants to animals the i suppose if you want the fancy science name for it assimilation so we can turn plant proteins into animal proteins and um, but eating will do just just fine there number six what process moves carbon from living organisms to the environment well um usually we talk about breathing when we breathe out we breathe out carbon dioxide so um breathing will do fine Fancy name is respiration. Combustion is burning. So when you get any fossil fuel, if you light it on fire, it will combust. So it will go on fire and it will release energy and heat or maybe light um, into the atmosphere. But it also releases um, some carbon-based compounds. I think the next question asks us, the products when you burn methane, products when you burn mosques, hydrocarbons most fossil fuels are the same and the first one is carbon dioxide and the second one is water two types of <clears throat> organic organic usually is living or stuff that was alive so for, for for number nine um any of your fossil fuels so um so i'll put that as one fossil fuels fossils and also a great carbon store is Soil or trees um, are great for taking in, storing carbon for us. Number 10, name a carbon store formed from the remains of plant and animal swell. Things like coal, oil. Number 11, inorganic carbon stores. So well, one inorganic car um, carbon store, a great one, is the sea. The sea is a great carbon store. And carbon is also stored in things like um, minerals and ore and things like that as well. 
This one here caused a bit of confusion, and it is, it is not a great diagram, to be honest with you. So I suppose let's just kind of figure out what are they looking for us to put in the box here. Well, if we start off um, um, with, with the obvious ones. So going from, um, let me see, going from our atmosphere down here to our plant. So number two um, is, going to, is going to be photosynthesis. Going up here, going from this deer thing up to number one is, so number four is going to be respiration. Respiration. Number one up here by itself is just the atmosphere. Number three, you're going from whatever this is here, whatever six is, so going all the way up here to back to the atmosphere, so number three is combustion or burning. Number five, number five, so you give you death and, and uh, death and whatever five is. So usually death, uh, after death, we, um, to form the fossil fuels, we get decay and fossilization. Um, and number six, number six, number six, is your fossils themselves. So number six is what you have down on the ground is going to be your fossils or fossilization of that. Okay, your two main ones there are getting it up. So getting it up into the atmosphere are your combustion and your respiration. So they send the carbon up to the atmosphere. And to get it down, you have photosynthesis. That's really the only way we have to get it down. So photosynthesis. These ones here are going to be your stores. So decay, fossilization, storing it in trees um, are going to be how we store the carbon. And the, other, the, the, the rest of them are ways either to get it up to the atmosphere or get it down from the atmosphere. And the trick is for harmony on the planet is to have an equal amount going in this way as you have going up this way. The problem is now we have lots going up and only this one coming down. Transpiration, again, part of plant reproduction. This is evaporation of H2O from plants. So it evaporates from the surface of a leaf and plants. What weather conditions lead to high rates of, of, of transpiration? Well, I assume warm. Warm weather. Easier to turn water from a liquid to a gas. Um, and that's our answer to question 15 as well. So evaporation is going from liquid to water vapor. And when something changes from a liquid to a water vapor, it can rise up. How are clouds formed? One word will do us there. Condensation. <clears throat> the water transfers back from a gas to a liquid. Why does it rain? Okay, more geography here. So it, obviously it, it rains because the clouds then, so when you, have your, when you have your cloud and you have all your H2O in a cloud and it moves to an area of different temperature, then the cloud bursts open and the H2O falls down. So why does it rain? The cloud passes over an area of different temperature. So the two forms are liquid, water stores, name the two forms of liquid water stores on earth. Okay, so you're going to have your, your seas and you're going to have your, no rivers, and reservoirs. Precipitation, fancy name for rain. Three types of precipitation. It's gonna be your rain, your snow, and sleet. Okay. How does fog form? Right. Well, how does fog form? Do you think? Well, fog is just um, essentially cloud. At ground level. So why would cloud form at ground level? What is happening to? 
what is happening to the evaporation process coming from the ground. And essentially fog forms when you have cold at ground level, like so. What does condensation mean? So if you think of condensation, we always think of condensation on the inside window of a car, but condensation means, um, as a scientific defini de definition, is a gas to a liquid, usually on a cold surface. So it gets a, it's a, it's a, a gas turning to a liquid, usually water vapor turning to actual water. Okay, then we're back to the water cycle. I know you're sick of doing the water cycle, but let's have a quick look at the water cycle. Um, so uh, I'm not even gonna write these in because you, you know them. So obviously up here, you have water evaporating like so. Um, number two, where's number two? So number two is transpiration going from the trees back um, back up front, back up to the, up, up to the sky, up to the clouds. So it's, it's very similar to evaporation, except it's evaporating from the surface of a leaf. Number three, then, you have the cloud moving over the land. Number four, you have precipitation going down. Then you have, um, you're going down to the soil and starting to work its way back to the sea. And then it can go through the rocks in number eight. But it always goes back down. Either it goes back down the hill or it goes down into the soil and down through the rocks and so on. It gets filtered. And this is why you can, you can bottle this stuff so you can't bottle this stuff up here because it, it filters through the rocks and the minerals and so on. <clears throat> That's the water cycle, but it always goes back to the always go back to the tree. I know we did a quick correction of this, but most of these, um, nearly everyone had it right. Um, anyway, okay, and that is your correction of of your questions. If you have any questions about that at all, you can stick a comment up. Um, if you're or if, if you're unsure, but most of you got nearly all of those right when I was looking through them the other night. So I don't think many of you had much issue with them. Okay, so on to today's stuff then. So after you've gone and have a, have a look at those, I'm just going to go back out here. I'm staying inside the cycles of the earth folder in the one node. And I'm just clear, I'm after making the one over here called climate change. And again, this is another one I know you're kind of, you've been exposed to an awful lot and every time you put the news on, but it is one of the most important scientific topics of our time um, and this is another learning outcome completely but it's kind of based around the around the cycles especially around the carbon cycle students should be able to illustrate how earth's processes so that's one of earth's processes or two of them was the water cycle and the carbon cycle and human factors when we add ourselves into it influence the earth's climate and evaluate effects of climate change and initiated an attempt to address those effects. So things that we're doing to try and sort ourselves out and not let this climate change run away from us. So we'll have a chat about a couple of these. Um, so most of our climate change are attributed to very small variations in Earth's orbit that change the amount of solar energy our planet receives. And that's normal. So we've had ice ages before and we've had various changes to the climate and so on. But that's um, based on the, on the rotation of the earth and so on. But this is what we're kind of looking at. So the, the greenhouse effect, again, this is normal as well. Because carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is released. So this dangerous gas, the one they tell us we shouldn't be, shouldn't be um, 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 using and releasing and so on. But that's, like, we have to respire, but most of us have to breathe. Volcanoes erupt. Carbon dioxide is released into the, in, in, into the air. And what that does, though, is it's, it has this heat trapping effect. And it stops carbon dioxide from escaping. And that's what we call the greenhouse effect. So we want the carbon, we want the carbon dioxide to be able to escape. Um, to not block the solar energy from being able to escape. I mean... Carbon dioxide is not going to escape. The solar energy needs to escape. So I'm just going to flick down here really quickly to show you something. That we'll show you what I'm talking about here. So here's here's our greenhouse effect here. So here's the solar energy from the sun. So the, the solar energy comes in and it hits the planet. And we want that to go back out into space. Bye-bye. We only want a small amount of that energy to stay inside our atmosphere to keep us warm. The problem is, is that if we put loads of carbon dioxide in here, the 
the solar energy starts bouncing about and stays within the atmosphere. Okay, so that's what here um, is this enhanced greenhouse effect. So the more CO2 you have, more heat's retained and that causes the sun to heat up. So all of this here is good. The greenhouse effect is great. It keeps the it keeps the, the planet warm, stops us from freezing. What we don't want is this here. We don't want the enhanced greenhouse effect by extra CO2. Okay, so here's what kind of um what we had over the past thousands of years. So how much car over here on the left, how much carbon dioxide did we have in the atmosphere? And you see there that it's kind of gone. It's, it's gone down and up and down and up and down and up. And that's all, that's all grand. So carbon dioxide does increase and decrease and increase and decrease and so on based on the normal functions of the planet. But, and as per normal, it's gone down a bit and then it's gone up a bit. But since um, 19, 1950, which is just here, we've had this crazy increase. Only in the past 70 years, we've had this massive increase. And that's what we call the enhanced greenhouse effect. And that enhanced greenhouse effect is due to human activities. What human activities? We think coal and oil burning. We think knocking down trees. And that has brought us to, from 280 to 400 parts per million in the last 150 years. We say, well, how do we get carbon dioxide back down? Well, we use plants. Plants are a great carbon store, but we're doing deforestation as well. So we're getting rid of the, st uh, of, the, uh, of, uh, of the carbon store. That has given rise to one degree Celsius rise in average planet temperature. Um, and um, the heat is being retained by the planet. That is global warming. Okay, and I know you know that, but um, you might have to have a, have a read through this whole thing yourself just to make sure that that is, you understand the difference in gr um, the, the greenhouse effect, which is fine, or the enhanced greenhouse effect, which is not. And this is other examples here of different things um, th that are contributing to global warming. So, um, Waste decomposing in your landfills, so that you, you wherever you turn your in, in your black bin, agriculture, cattle farming, um, and methane is a far more active greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. So we 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 kind of we we laid all the blame at the foot of carbon dioxide, but actually, methane is worse. So cattle farming is a major contributor. As well as so we kind of focus on our airplanes and our buses and our three litre diesel cars, but methane is also a major contributor of global warming. What does that mean? Why are we so worried about the planet being warmer? Should wouldn't it be nice if it was a bit warmer? The problem is, is that we melt the polar ice caps. We melt the polar ice caps. Obviously, melting means solid to liquid, so ice turns to water. You turn the ice to water means there's more water in the seas. And that means we get increasing sea levels. If water becomes warm, it means it expands, which means there's more water again. Sea level rises. The sea level rises, um, we start to get changes in atmospheric pressure. Evaporation and precipitation across the planet leads to climate change. And we get these extreme weather events such as storms, flooding, droughts, all the nasty things you want to try to avoid. We went through the greenhouse effect already. So even if we stop now, global warming would keep happening, not just for the next year or two. If, if, if Greta Thunberg managed to convince every world leader in the world to, to, to go completely green, it would still take decades if not hundreds of years because it takes a while for the planet to respond um, and carbon dioxide hangs around in the atmosphere for hundreds of years 
So it's not like we're going to see an immediate effect. The planet will still um, continue to rise. And so I always talk about we're doing this for our kids and our kids' kids and so on because um, we're not going to see the benefit of this too quickly. We're still going to get the storms and um, things like that that we've already because we've already done the damage. Um, but um, so basically, what you're looking at is solution. Things like international policy agreements bike to work schemes instead of cars we want to reduce carbon footprints green school initiatives reduce your carbon footprint we need to become more energy efficient and use clean energy renewable energy things like recycling things green bin that is in now at every house and um, insulating so you use less you, you're burning less gas alternative energy wind energy hydroelectric and we did projects on all of those before driving electric cars or more fuel efficient cars people drive electric cars they don't really ask where electricity comes from usually from burning fossil fuels but sure um, it's another story plant more trees plant more trees get rid of more carbon dioxide Okay, so I'm not going to go into a massive amount of detail in that because I'm sure you've done it to death. And I'm sure if you asked your question on global warming, most of, <clears throat> most of you have to answer it without even listening to the video for the last 15 minutes or so. So what I'd like you to do for Thursday, and again, I said we might have a live class on Thursday. So keep an eye on Schoology and I'll put that up on Wednesday if we're, if we're, going, to do, if we're going to do a live class. If there's anything um, coinciding with that or people can't, sit for a live class on Thursday at the timetable time well then would you stick it up on Schoology and let me know so then I won't do it I'll just do another video and um, because as I said on Thursday we are going on to look at um, this one here chemical reactions so we have a lot of stuff to do on chemical reactions but um, so let me know if you can if, if you're not around for the live class at the timetable slot on Thursday so for homework and again some of you are, are, are doing this straight away the rest of you go back and get that homework done from last week if you haven't uh, if you haven't done it um and and, and get and this one as well so copy it in to OneNote or write it straight into OneNote if you want to copy the full document in and um, just questions on climate change difference in weather and climate geography question and um, what's meant by climate change um how do humans humans contribute to it? What are greenhouse gases? What's a carbon footprint? And then there's kind of a graph thing to do, which they're going to throw in. If they're going to ask you this, they're going to ask you to graph some data on carbon. So basically, you're turning this uh, into a graph down here. Okay, and there's about twenty minutes work in that, so um, you can finish that. You can watch that as as soon as you finish the video. So do those when you finish the video, or you can do them later on, whatever suits you. Okay, so let me know about Thursday. Get those questions done. And if you haven't got your homework uploaded from last week, do so. Because um, I need to make sure that everyone is keeping up with what we're supposed to be doing. Right, have a great week, everyone. And I will talk to you on Thursday.